Okay, here we are, the final stage of our painted portraits with the larger-than-life style, trying to emulate that movie poster look. The final stage is color pencil, and this is the technique that's going to save us any details that we couldn't quite get with the brush we are now able to do with color pencil. This is really going to make it sing. Let's do this! <laughs> Alright, so the color pencil phase, this is really going to help and you're going to fall in love with this part of it because this is the final step and you're really able to do a lot to bring it together very easily with what you have painted. But a lot of times artists get confused with this. Once they start doing this technique, they get into a habit where the underpainting, you know, everything that we did before, they get into this habit where they just start saying, you know what, I'll do that later with color pencil and they really start half-assing the wash stage and they really start half-assing the opaque stage just thinking they're going to fix it later and when you do that you start doing so much color pencil that there's not enough of an underpainting where it starts to look like pastels and it, it doesn't have that cool mixed media look that you want to achieve so the best thing that you can do when you do your darkest darks rock it out and make it look great when you do your washes rock it out and make it look as best you can. Pretend you don't even get to do anything else. Pretend like that's the end of the painting. Then when you do the opaques, same thing. Make it look as good as you can, pretending that you don't have color pencils to rely on. That way when you get to color pencils, it's just the right touch, but it's not too much color pencil. It's just what you need. So. The first thing I like to do, I like to go around and I like to use, before I even add any other colors, I like to use my black color pencil and my white color pencil. This way I can, it's almost like I'm starting over with the painting and I'm going to start with my darkest darks and I'm really going to take a look and where do I need to emphasize? You know what? This edge of the hair here, I need this to go just a little bit darker. Here's this, I need to round out this area kind of right around the side of her face. And I need to darken this just a little bit more. And look at that, I can just chisel that out a little bit and see how much that really helped, kind of the side of the face right there. I can chisel out the eyes and really get kind of the darkness going there and around her eyes here. And part of it is, you know, there was the washes that go over, it kind of lightens it up a little bit, so now we can kind of pull it back. We can also get some individual eyelashes. Eyebrows go a little bit darker here. Eyebrows are darker here, and sometimes you don't know until you get to this stage. You know, when I was painting the washes, it seemed like it was dark enough. I can see like the darkness here needs to go a little bit further. The darkness around the hair here. Right on the side of the, the jaw over here and under the hair here. That's just a little bit darker, so I can go ahead and I can really kind of chisel that out with color pencil. See how that just really kind of tucks that back? Really nice. I can go and I can add some highlights. So now I've got the highlights here. I can make this a little brighter here. I don't want to go too crazy. Put the eye here. This is a little bit brighter. A little bit brighter over here. Soften this up on the nose here. I can soften the nose there. Soften this. A little bit of a highlight here. We can start going in with some of the colors. So I can start putting in some of this color here to get this color into this top. Some lighter colors and some, some darker colors. A little bit of reflected light over here. Bring some color back into washes and the overspray. A little bit of light here, right here in the eyes. I can pull out a little bit of light on some of these, these little bubbles if I need to. 
I can start using the peach tone and I can start rendering some of the areas where I went a little bit dark and I can kind of lighten up. So this side of the cheek here goes a little bit lighter. See how that pulls that right back out? Kind of makes that cheek stand out a little bit. eyebrow there, a little bit lighter above the eyebrow. See how that just totally fleshes that area out a little bit, a little bit lighter against that, this little patch of light in there, just a little bit lighter on that side of the face, a little bit lighter over here, don't want to go too crazy with it, but I can start drawing in some of these crazy details. You know, the highlights in her hair, in general, her hair needs to go darker, which I'm gonna make it darker, mm -hmm. but there are some highlights, and I can actually pull out a little bit of highlights in the part here, but there are just a couple. So I wouldn't wanna use a white color pencil because it's not actually white, but it's just, just light enough. Most of this needs to go darker, which I should have done with the washes, to be honest. The more you can do with the washes, the better it's going to look. Otherwise, it's going to be too color pencil-y. I'm almost seeing like a little bit of orange. So I can start adding in some of these fun colors that like I see now that maybe I didn't see as much when I was doing the washes. And maybe it's not strong enough to do these with opaques. But if I just throw in just a little bit of pizzazz with color pencils, it won't be too much. Even in the hair, it almost seems like there's a little bit of, just a little bit of color. And this is where you can get crazy with it a little bit because you can, with the color pencils, you've got so much control and it's, it's where you're almost drawing again, even though this is a painting. But again, if you start doing too much color pencil, it's not gonna be a painting anymore. It's gonna be a drawing and you're barely gonna see the uh, painting underneath. So there's some areas here where I can take dark brown. I can see here, for example, that the shadows under here need to go a little bit darker. This should have been wash because now if you look closely from far away, like that, that locks it in like nice and dark. But if you look closely, like you can kind of see the grain of the color pencil and the lighter color underneath. So ideally, this actually should have been paint. Same with this area here, like I can make this, this needs to go darker. But you see how chalky that looks now? It would have been better if I did a darker wash underneath. That would have flushed that out just a little bit more. Every little bit is, is just totally helping bringing it closer and closer. Her hair is getting darker. For a while there, it was almost looking like she was blonde. Christy, if you're watching this, James and I both decided you would look really rad with blonde hair. There's no denying that. We took we, we took a survey. Just saying. We ran those numbers. If you're ever bored and you need something new, you could totally rock being blonde. But it doesn't always have to be a dark color pencil. You could use like a terracotta. Push some of those dark areas a little bit darker, a little bit darker under the lips, and you've just got so much control with the color pencils. But the only reason this technique looks good and works good is we have an awesome underpainting to rock out underneath it. So don't get confused of why it looks good and think, oh, I'm just gonna color pencil the crap out of my paintings because- Nothing but green. Yeah, it's not gonna work as well as, as you would think. The better your painting is underneath, the better off you're, you're gonna be. So rendering it out, I could draw all these cool little details in here. There's so much that you can do and uh, and just play with and have fun. Every step of the way gets it closer and closer. I can really render out all these little pieces in here. I'm gonna have a lot more fun with this as, as I go. So same thing, I like to start usually with my darkest darks. So I can kind of start with the eyes and really take a look at, you know, like this highlight maybe needs to be fixed a little bit. Get the pupil a little bit more and the beard need to go a little darker. So there's some areas here. In general, this needs to go darker here. 
this whole side of the beard goes a little bit darker and this is going to be nice because you can see how it just you can start to create these dark pockets where it's you know you can see really clearly and you can see this you know when I added the darkest darks but now that I, I have this underpainting it's just so much easier to go in and add these these rockin' darks to really flesh it out. Right now Fiji is getting lost in the uh, background a little bit. One thing we can do, we don't want to go too crazy with this, but we can start to add an outline. And this takes away some of the realism. So you want to be careful with this because this right away you start doing this and your your illustration will never be the same in a way it's cool because it brings it back to the fact that it's illustrated and it almost makes it cartoony because in real life no one has a dark line around them or a flying robot or a flying robot this kind of brings it back to the drawing and it makes it feel illustrated and and it, it looks kind of cool and it's it's something again it's larger than life and it's different than a photograph you can see how already this is helping to make it uh, to make it look like Fiji is totally uh, standing off of the page to make this sun glow a little bit more. I can kind of fade it out a little bit with a color pencil. Ideally, I probably should have done more with the white wash. Now it's just going to be crusty, a crusty glow, as opposed to like an actual glow that would have looked much better with paint, but it's still kind of cool. So it's starting to come together. It's actually looking pretty cool. What is this crimson red? And I can beef up some of the reds in here in the areas where it just needs to go a little bit darker. make it stand out a little bit more look at that it really already that helps the print and I can put highlights in there too which is cool super cool and it's got this really cool illustrated look there's so much more I can do with this on Fiji in some of the light areas but also the shadow areas I can push and pull on some of his armor and really kind of define some of the shapes. This whole area needs to, I didn't want it absolute light. All of this kind of needed to get just a little bit lighter, just a little bit more defined. Here are the finished pieces. Here is Aladdin and Fiji, and this is my completed color pencils rocking it out but again it's the underpainting that you're really seeing at first the color pencils are just kind of some fine details pulling it together here is the princess and i think this looks really cool it's a great technique and it really just kind of gives that larger than life movie poster look hopefully you can infuse some of these techniques into the way you guys are doing your painting and of course the last step that you want to do with this technique you need to Add in your John Hancock. Did you enjoy class today? If so, give me a like. If there's something you'd like to see me cover in a future video, let me know what that is in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I've also got a video series called Sketchbook Challenge that helps your drawing, creativity, and fill up an awesome looking sketchbook. Plus, there are videos on You Can Draw Star Wars, Hollywood is Dead, and sneak peeks at the Aladdin 3477 Motion Picture Trilogy. In order to not miss any new videos, hit that notification bell. Sharing is caring, and it's great to inspire your friends. Share this video on social media, and your friends will share awesome art tips they find with you. If you're on Instagram, you can follow me at Matt underscore Bush underscore Instagram. I'll see you back in the classroom soon. Don't be tardy.